From Mellon Hall in Studio 1C, this is Chatham College News with your hosts, Elise Underwood and Kim Isaacs. Hello out there and welcome to a special edition of Chatham College News. I'm Elise Underwood. And I'm Kim Isaacs. Today we will take an in-depth look at a variety of aspects that make Chatham College a thriving institution and learn more about what campus life is really like within the small academic community. From history to global focus and even a little bit of controversy, there are no boundaries. We'll cover it all. So Kim, let's get started. Have you ever heard the saying, you can't know where you're going until you know where you come from? It's referring to history, something that we all have, colleges not excluded. So what was the original version of Chatham? Will the transition to university status eventually phase out this single-sexed undergraduate population? Join Kimber Powers as she investigates the past, present, and future of Chatham students and academics. Secluded between the neighborhoods of Squirrel Hill and Shadyside, Chatham College is one of Pittsburgh's oldest landmarks. Formerly known as both the Pennsylvania Female College and the Pennsylvania College for Women, the campus maintains an intimate community setting within a serious academic environment. But underneath its polished landscape, Chatham has significant history, history that has continued to grow over the last 138 years. It is clear to see that the college has experienced various physical changes throughout its history. But how has it changed socially? Was Chatham always a school highly devoted to academics and scholarship? Or was it once just a finishing school on the hill? Faculty members, some who are alumni, say that the school has always been serious in academics. We have pictures of the students working in the labs in the late 1890s, okay. you know, in the early 20th century in serious science. When the college was founded, it was founded and it was a serious college from day one, uh, designed to give women the same educational opportunities that men had always had. Okay. So I think the, can, the idea that Chatham was or in some way some finishing school is, has never been the case. If you look at the very first years, curriculum is heavily into Latin and Greek and physics and mathematics and science and there's no tea pouring. Joyce Malio, who is doing a senior thesis on campus history, says the image of an old Chatham woman is nothing like those of today. To me what it looked like it was mostly I'm gonna be a professional mommy instead of I'm gonna be an independent woman and a boss of my own one day. With the college moving towards becoming a university, many students feel even more history will be lost. However, sources close to higher administration assure that is not the case. One of the main reasons uh, that we're structuring the university the way we have is to protect the women's college, which the trustees, Dr. Barazzoni, uh, members of President's Council, and, and the faculty all feel is the traditional the, the really the historic heart of this institution. As the college strives to gain university status and continues to expand its academic programs, it opens a new chapter for its future. But as yet another group of Chatham seniors graduate this spring, they close one by leaving their contributions, memories, and most importantly their own history on a campus that already has so much. Kimber Powers, Chatham College News, Pittsburgh. Thank you, Kimber. One of the college's current focuses is the well-being of all of its students. In an effort to promote health awareness, Chatham recently partnered with Planned Parenthood of Western Pennsylvania and got the green light to distribute the morning after pill on campus in the midst of Valentine's Day, a time of the year where hormone levels are high, but the stakes of unwanted pregnancy and disease are even higher. Elise Underwood explores the positive and negative aspects of this decision. Along with flowers and romantic cards, put an emergency contraceptive on your list of things to pick up for this Valentine's Day. Planned Parenthood of Western Pennsylvania and Chatham College have teamed up to distribute free morning after pills to students. We decided to have a free EC day in order to promote that emergency contraception is now available over the counter. 
Um, that happened back in November, and there still is a lot of misinformation, and a lot of people don't realize it's more accessible now. So we decided by having this special promotion that people would um, get that information and know where they can obtain emergency contraception. Students continue to educate themselves in order to make an informed decision. Um, I think that giving out contraceptives for free um, is definitely a good choice for the college to make. Um, what women had to go through to get contraceptives in the first place was a long enduring battle, especially in the 60s and 70s up till today. And now we have things like the shot and the patch, but the fact that the college is willing to give out contraceptives for free to women, especially in these dire circumstances, I think that's definitely a positive thing the college can do, especially as a women's college. Um, in a women's movement, I think it's definitely a good move to make. When it comes to birth control and any sort of contraceptive usage, many people confuse emergency contraception, or the morning after pill, with the abortion pill. Emergency contraception can only be used to prevent pregnancy, not terminate it. Like all controversial issues, there are people against it. I think that uh, because the emergency contraceptive pill is not a guarantee against pregnancy or uh, STDs, it should not be something that is relied upon, however it is very useful. Side effects like significant weight gain, loss of vision and trouble speaking are negative aspects of the EC pill. Not to mention it is only proven to be 80% effective. With odds like that, one wonders if it's even worth the trouble. Some may argue that the EC pill promotes promiscuous behavior, especially in young teens. But for now, the Planned Parenthood Clinic chooses to stand behind this popular form of contraception. Elise Underwood, Chatham College News.